four, three, two, one. Lift off. It's huddle time. Max, Joe, and Gage gonna blow your mind. It's huddle time. Brand new show on YouTube Live. Fired up and ready to go. We're talking volleyball on the huddle show. No script, it's all free flow. Max, Joe, and Gage on the huddle show. Come on. What's up, guys? Here with another episode of The Huddle. I'm Gage Worsley here, jo uh, joined with Joe Worsley here. He will be joining us from our bathroom uh, due to lack of space. I really can't see him right now. It's March 23rd. Got a guest on, Micah Ma later. Just want to say hi. Jo Joe's joining us from the bathroom. What's up, Joe? Hello, everybody. It's March 23rd. Um, as Gage has said and we've spoken, it's kind of a crazy time right now. Um, and we're glad to... Uh, be in contact with you guys here. We uh, we feel that we uh, can interact with people and talk about some uh, interesting topics. And again, today, you know, uh, people in the people in the world today are being paid a lot of money uh, to know what's going on, who don't know what's going on. And I think uh, it's caused a lot of craziness in the media. And we've we've uh, we're hopefully here to bring you some uh, some fun times and uh, some entertaining stories. Uh, like you said, we have Mike and Ma'a coming on here live uh, in just about 15 minutes with us. Um, and uh, we're going to talk, you know, we uh, were uh, past teammates with each other. Uh, we played against each other. We uh, have watched each other play or fans of each other. Um, but uh, I think uh, you're going to enjoy the segment when he joins us later on today. Um, recent news today, I think, uh, uh, if most of you haven't heard, uh, the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, uh, released a statement on Tokyo yesterday. Uh, the, uh, head of the IOC, Thomas Bach, uh, came out and, uh, said that he basically feels that it would be unfair, um, for the athletes and for the countries involved to, uh, to postpone the Olympics. And that was followed up by today. A uh, member of the IOC, Rick Pound, came out and said that uh, he believes out of all the uh, talks and out of all the communication going on between the committee that it will be postponed. So there's a lot of mixed communication coming from the IOC and what they are uh, and what they are going to decide. But I think uh, uh, for us, you know, it's it's going to be really interesting to see. That's the one of the biggest events in the world. Uh, and for it to be postponed or canceled would say a lot for what, what uh, officials are saying about this um, pandemic going on. Uh, um, Joe, may I, Joe, may I add something there? Yes. I know that I was talking to Max and, and the reason why a lot of, a lot of corporations haven't canceled their um, pulling out from the Olympics. Like I think mm -hmm. United and all these other, all these other um, corporations is because they signed a contract and max was telling me this they signed a contract and in that contract it says if you pull out you'll be uh, be fined very 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 hefty um, yeah and big time and part of that going in is uh further uh agreements like you said gage going past the olympics if they had agreed to mm -hmm. uh host events or certain other um sport events or music events or entertainment in those events in the next coming year, obviously those will have to be canceled. Those contracts will have to be yeah. cut. I mean, um, I see this. Sorry. Cut you off. I, said, I see this more as like a domino effect. You saw Canada just pull, they just pulled their athletes out of the Olympics mm -hmm. and then they released a statement like this. I think it's going to be a domino effect where um, you're going to see more and more countries come out. And eventually, as you, as you said, it's going to lead to, I mean, cancellation or suspension. And then who knows? Maybe, I mean, we've been hearing rumors about 2022 Olympics. Uh, maybe we have to wait another four years. We're, we're, no one's really sure what's happening. Yeah, of course. And uh, obviously with the cancellation here, the uh, Canadian Olympic Committee not saying they're not going to be sending their athletes to the Olympics. Um, that effect, and we'll see how other countries respond to that. Uh, the United States, we, we saw earlier this week that the, um, or this past weekend that the swimming or uh, USA swimming came out and said that they are pushing for the postponement of the Olympics. Um, and with that, uh, you know, I, I feel like we'll see it really, you know, the, the countries that uh, come out and make this a point to 
try to push back the Olympics. I think if the U S comes out and says countries like the U S um, um, or bigger dele uh, delegates come out and say that they want to push these Olymp Olympics back, I think we're going to see this happen. If this decision hasn't already been made, you know, sometimes these decisions have already been made and they just haven't been released to the public. And yeah. so for us, uh, it'll be interesting <laughs> to see. And obviously it affects a lot for volleyball players around the world, um, but also athletes of all uh, sporting backgrounds. And so we uh, will have to wait and see. Like, I think it, like everybody's been doing here with this whole thing and uh, not just sports, but uh, businesses um, and events all over the world. So it's kind of a waiting game at this point. And obviously health is the most important thing in these, uh, in these time periods, but I think it'll be important uh, for us to uh, kind of really understand what the situation is before we can make these type of decisions uh, in canceling the Olympics or canceling certain leagues and events going into next year. Um, and kind of more, uh, more uh, uh, or news more relative to Gage and where he is right now, he is on Oahu. Um, the mayor of Honolulu came out yesterday, Kirk Caldwell, and released a statement saying that all residents beginning today uh will be put in a state uh saw happen in california and other states and uh yeah. so we're starting to see more states responding this way and i think uh i think we're going to see most of the u.s um in a stay-at-home order yeah uh, we, sooner than later i mean we it's not like like most quarantines are about two weeks we're in quarantine until april 30th and they said it's probably gonna be longer than that so my talk i talked with mom and dad um I said I should stay here, finish my school because I have supplies. I know a lot of guys are thinking about coming home. Uh, I just got the, the phone with Charlie Wade, and he was like, you know, this is where being the most isolated, one of the most, if not the most isolated place in the world, kind of. Definitely the most haze. isolated. I mean, I mean, yeah, definitely the most isolated. So we're over here. Um, I know that. Yeah, so I guess I'm going to be doing a lot of working out at home. Uh, I just got a big tub of cookie dough, so I'm going to be pounding that for i got a pazuki maker got a lot of stuff in the works here um class i just i just ended spring break so class officially started and then we just got put on isolation so um speaking of the pazuki maker yeah. uh explain to us i i've heard something called the libero diet here mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah can you explain um, to us uh the libero diet and if you were um following through with the libero diet here during this i would just like uh, to lock out I would just like to give full props to uh, Larry Tui Tui Ledic because I'm not the I'm not the originator of the libero diet. I remember we were on our preseason. It was my freshman year. I was on my preseason uh, uh, trip. We were we were going. I think it was C USC CSUN, just kind of making a West Coast. I think three or four team um, matches. And so I'm over there, and, and first thing we go, this is the first the first restaurant we go to in the morning. We go to Denny's. So we go to Denny's, and Tui's like, "Yeah, I'd like." a double milkshake, which is like double whipped cream. I mean, a double cheeseburger with fries on the side. I'm like, wow, you're incredible. I was like, that's amazing. So he orders this. I'm like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on this too. He's like, it's called the libero diet, boys, libero diet. And he always joked around about that. So I got on board very quickly because I'm a foodie. I love that food. I like, I like munching on that food. So I'm all about that. So I go and then I continue this libero diet. And the libero diet, think of it as – don't think of it as uh, something you, you can do as a libero. Think of it as a necessity, something that must be done. Uh, we're out there. We're, we're rolling around. We're getting dirty. We're, we, we're, we have to stay grounded this entire time. In order to stay grounded, you got to have a nice base. Now, some people say do some squats, lift. I, I'm not all about that. I'm all about getting the food in my body that lets me stay grounded. And I mean, Sometimes I'll go out, I'll pound a couple, I'll pound like a couple, double cheeseburger for the game. Most people are like, oh, athletes are like, oh, this. And I'm like, bro, whatever's coming into my stomach is coming into my stomach. Cool, pig eggs, Benedict, that's going down my stomach. Um, I'm usually just chugging food before the game. That way I can stay grounded and, and low to the ground. Um, so that's basically the libero diet. Uh, eat what you want, live how you want to live. And that's, that's, that's uh, what I implement in my, uh, my diet, how I eat. <laughs> And for those wondering, Gage, 100% story, my uh, junior year, I believe, we were at a match at USC, and 
we go at eight for some, we were at a, it was a preseason match, I feel. And we go uh, and we're on the road here and breakfast doesn't open at the hotel for some reason. And Josh Walker's our van driver. We pull up, me too, we engage and are in the uh, car together. We pull up to Denny's. And these guys before our match against USC order milkshakes, cheeseburgers, fries, uh, and they ordered something else on the side, but um, cakes, probably. And to say we 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 definitely won that map those matches Absolutely. that day. Fired and fueled, baby. Fired and fueled. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so that uh that libero die has lived on. I think. Uh, um, Great infamy. <laughs> very I try, very I try, legendary reputation. I try passing UH program. I try to pass it uh, to different liberos. Brett Stewart, who was our libero last year. I mean, it's kind of about it. He kind of, but but he hasn't really gained weight. He's a high metabolism. And then we got Shay and Leigh, who are both. I love them to death. They're phenomenal liberos, phenomenal people. But they're so small where they're just that's just not their forte. Um, because I because Leigh Choi, who's the brother of Bailey Choi, who's on the team, they live together, and she's she can be very protective of them. She's like, and she's like, you gotta watch out for Gage. Because uh, Mom's like Bailey, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Leigh. I'm gonna take him on the back of my moped and start riding around. She kind of freaks out, but. Basically, I'm trying to reach my influence onto the younger generation, but uh, I'm being stopped by, I don't know, whomever, I guess. Yeah. True intellectual, true uh, exactly educator here. Yeah. <laughs> Nutritionist. You know, you know in, uh, you see uh, athletes talk about this a lot in these types of time periods when they retire or when they're injured um, or their season's over. Um, a lot of athletes uh, really struggle um, – moving into uh, a life where they don't have a set schedule. They don't have a plan or a routine every single day where they're told they have to be here. They have to do this. Um, I've definitely found that myself, uh, I struggle with this, you know, <laughs> sitting at home where literally the, the only thought is what is my next meal or what, uh, <laughs> what uh, show am I going to watch next on Netflix? And um, Gia, what have you uh, found your biggest struggle uh, in terms so, of this so idea? Be- being an athlete in college, you don't really, I mean, you're on go, go, go. Right. And, and Joe's and I's life was always been like that. Cause my dad was the club. So when we had free time, we didn't spend it with anything else other than on the go, on the go, or getting pack rim or just doing something with the family. So now that we have all this time and, and we're mandated to stay at home, cause I'm, I'm, because like I said, we're on the go. So if I do a free time, I like to be outside and doing something that I normally, that I can't do at home. Um, so now that I'm mandated at home, I'm really not sure what to do. You know, my latest schedule has consisted of wake up, uh, go get some sausage McMuffins and hash browns, pound those, uh, uh, watch around, eat Netflix all day and eat some cookie dough. <laughs> and, and that's basically my day. But it's very important. I kinda, starting today, I think that I kind of will have a set routine. Um, you see a lot of workouts at home. You see a lot of uh, uh, stuff along those lines. And I think that implementing that into your life will keep you your mind sharp and along with your body and i think as athletes you know our, our bodies used to be like on the go and it's also a good time for resting i mean i mean i know we're only halfway through the season but i'm um, for the people watching i'm sure um i'm sure you've had it where i mean even half through the season your body's banged up um so the rest is good but i mean you still gotta after that hovering along you need you still gotta grind it out and make sure you have a set schedule it sounds like we're in prison <laughs> this yeah. year this year this year but i mean it, whatever keeps your mind and body sharp to be honest exactly and coming in here we have uh our special guest will be joining us here live in a couple seconds Micah Ma. and if you have any questions about while he's on ask below on the youtube live i'm, I'm watching it uh as we speak and so. with this live here we have Mike Ma, comma Two-time first-team All-American, Grammy-winning recording artist, UCLA <laughs> alum. Hey, don't forget, the Oscars. don't forget the Oscar. Don't forget the Oscar. Don't forget the Oscar. Don't forget Oscar. Michael Ma here with us live. Welcome, Michael. Uh, man, it's so great here to be on the huddle. So great to be on the huddle. Yeah. Mike, Welcome to my come, bedroom and Joe's bathroom. <laughs> Mike, where do you come what, to us from here? Where, Where are you at right now? Where am I at? I'm driving back down to Los Angeles with Zana. Uh, and we just went camping for like five days. Hey, Zana. It's super cool. Hey. Would you, wait, where'd you guys go? 
We went camping in like uh kind of by Santa Maria. I mean, were you? I mean, if it is, I mean, if you were, oh, oh, there it is. Look at that beautiful smile right there. Where I don't even know where Santa Maria is, but uh, Micah. It's it's like an hour and a half north of Santa Barbara. Oh, okay, so you're practicing social you distancing, is what you're telling me. We were what? You're practicing. Do you do you know what social distancing is? Yeah, social di- yeah, okay, yeah. We okay. were social distancing. Exactly. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know who are tuned in right now, uh, Micah, for me personally, Micah uh, played with me my sophomore year. I played, I played up that year, so I played with him. Then that was, and then we played on the junior team a little. Uh, my senior year, his sophomore year, and kind of been friends ever since. I still remember I came, Joe, go to pick him up at the airport. I was in the shower, come out of the shower, see this big Hawaiian hunk out there. And then from then on, a true love story, a true romance story. From then on. Uh, it was. That was the first time I laid my eyes on Jason's uh, <laughs> beautiful body. Uh, so, Micah, you played in France this year. How would you How would you explain your uh, your uh, your uh, experience there? My experience there was actually amazing. Um, it was a lot better than I thought it would be. I know I've heard from a lot of people that play volleyball and go overseas that the transition's kind of hard and uh, it gets really lonely. And it's like the first year is the hardest, but um, luckily my girlfriend came along for a lot of it and she made it a lot easier and a lot better. And then um, I had a bunch of young guys on the team. Uh, Almost all of our team was pretty young. So we all were kind of in the same boat and we all kind of got along really well and they're a great time. So, yeah, socially it was super awesome, and then volleyball-wise, France volleyball was French volleyball was super fun, and it's kind of like it's not the most physical league, but it's it's pretty smart and it's pretty competitive, so it was super fun. And and for those of you who follow you on social media, you can you see some of the uh, the games you play because you you were posting on your story. I saw one of those games. You had a what a thirty forty minute argument. What happened with that? No, yeah, so. Well, the French League has challenges, but the challenge systems are terrible. So it just (laughs) adds so much fuel to the fire. Like, they should totally take them away because, like, people go to it expecting to get the right call and it never works and everyone just raises havoc. So it's actually – what's the word? I guess in America we're just – we're just – not civil because that's like degrading to Europe, but it's just like a lot more politically correct. Like people yeah. are a lot more polite and stuff. And the volleyball there was, was, was pretty fun because it was pretty passionate and like kind of cutthroat. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of fighting. There's a lot of talking and um, yeah, I can't remember a single game where there wasn't at least p- two guys going up to the net talking or <laughs> a yellow card or something. I only got one yellow the whole year. So You ever got a red card? Um, no, nobody got a red card. We should have gotten a red card because <laughs> we got our team got two yellows. And the second yellow is supposed to be red, but the ref forgot because there was so much going on. Um, <laughs> so we just kept playing. This is mass chaos. You ever seen, you ever oh seen Semi-Pro, God. Micah? Micah, you ever seen Semi-Pro? No. Oh, there's a no. scene. Oh, Semi-Pro? Semi-Pro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jackie Moon. Yeah, like, dude, that's like one of my favorite videos. It's Look. like it's like wait till the commercial break. Everybody hit someone, just brawling everywhere. <laughs> when the light, when the TV goes off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the French there's league. So, there's gentlemen. so much gold in there. The guy, so, the guy that makes the the full court shot, and they don't, yeah. they don't have the money. To have the check. <laughs> like this is a hundred thousand dollars. Actually, it's twenty two thousand one hundred dollars. But I'll get Here's the rest the of the money check to you. That says, <laughs> so funny. Uh, Did so you try casting it at a big bank? <laughs> the big check. You know, you can't just take this to a normal bank. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about the challenge system is that once, I mean, a few gyms have it, including this in college. I don't know how it is for a pro, but in college, uh, what a few gyms have it, they have it pretty well, but then everyone tried to, ho- tried to hop on it, at least in the Big West they did. And they're trying to challenge these calls, like, and they have the worst camera systems, like, from the left corner oh, of the God. gym, trying to challenge, like, touches, like, like we're just, so like, looking bad, at the corner. Man. It's, oh, my God, it's so bad. It's, it's funny, though. It's so funny. Like, we're just, like, looking, and the, the ref's trying to be, like, 
like, oh yeah, I'm definitely trying to study this when he can't see anything to begin with. So I was thinking it's amusing. Yeah. So no, it's hilarious. So Micah, uh, me, Joe, Micah, and I were uh, played on our team. I don't, I don't know what the official tournament was. It was for USA. I know that it was a, a Olympic qualifier for the Olympic qualifier. And uh, so we're all on this team this summer. I think this was in late August. And uh, uh, he had an interesting path to get to. We were playing. Where were we? we were in Canada. Where in Canada where were we again? I have I no idea. We were Winnipeg. In Winnipeg. We were in Winnipeg, Canada. And I what? remember. Yeah, yeah. Winnipeg, Canada. It was, it was right above, uh, was oh, wow. it North Dakota or Minnesota? Minnesota. We were right above Minnesota. And uh, Micah had an interesting, interesting turn of events that happened that, that led him to get into uh, Winnipeg, Canada. So we're all we're all there. It was time to travel that day. Micah, you stay with us in our hotel room, and then he decided, okay, I gotta go home, gotta get all my stuff and pack. What two hours before the two hours before the flight, which is which is how how. I've come to know how Hawaiians kind of pack. Yeah. I mean, Hawaiians is kind of last second, just throw all their stuff in the bag and I respect it. Joe, you do the same thing, <laughs> but, uh, uh, <laughs> Micah, I want you to explain your story on how you got to Winnipeg, Canada. Let's hear that story. Uh, I think, I think you should tell it because I'm so bad at storytelling and it's not <laughs> too great of a story, but, uh, no. basically, yeah, I slept, I slept in the hotel with Joe and Gage. I have no idea why I had my own place, but I ended up sleeping there. And then last minute I had to get up and shoot over to my car, which had like all my stuff already packed in it. And for some reason, I just felt like checking for my passport. I don't, I got really lucky. Well, I don't know if it's lucky cause nothing great happened of it, but <laughs> I checked my bag and I couldn't find it anywhere. And we're supposed to be at the gym to meet to leave in like five minutes and so i can't find it anywhere i go i end up driving back to la from anaheim which is like an hour drive and i'm checking my girlfriend's apartment but it's completely locked and her and her roommate are both gone and so i have to call some guy to break into her apartment i know it's not in there but i have to <laughs> is this some random guy this is is this some random guy or a locksmith no, this is sorry. I should clarify. It's this a is a lock <laughs> no, this is a lock. I should <laughs> clarify because we could have found some guys. Just hey, buddy, look, look for look, look for there. sketchy characters in your phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just picking people up off the side of the road. But so I get in there and everything's gone. So yeah, I get to the airport and everybody gets on, gets through the security, and just leaves. And I don't have a passport. So I'm just waiting there, and, um, well, yeah, we have a guy that does uh, travel for USA, and sometimes he's not super helpful. So he calls me, and I have no idea what to do. I have have all, you tried your the pockets? The flight's about to leave 30 minutes in 30 minutes. And he calls me, and he's like, hey, Mike, I'm like, in the most nonchalant tone, so I figured I'd match him. So I'm like, hey, Rob, hey, how you doing? And uh, he's like, hey, what do you think about doing? I'm like, you know, I'm not quite sure. What do you think I should start doing? (laughs) And he's like, you know, I don't know. He hangs up. Nothing. So I'm sitting there. I end up running back and forth between terminals, trying to find flights um, with all my stuff. I lose my beats. And long story short, I fly fly to North Dakota. um, And I wait there. for a long night in Norfolk, uh, North Dakota. And our coaches drive from Winnipeg to North Dakota, pick me up and drive me back to where you guys were, where I later met with you. And was there any guarantee that, so you, you had some papers. I remember, uh, you said that you kind of banked. I had like some, some papers that just in case they asked for something, but I think it was like, I had a printout of my passport, which I figured was good enough anyway. <laughs> Picture. Uh, I should have let me on the dang flight. Expired driver's that's license. And, I and had there a was a driver's a... license, and that's about it. Was there any guarantee? Because the coach is, what was it, like a three hour drive there and a three hour drive no, back? No, there was, was no it... guarantee. They had no idea if they'd get me through the border or not. <laughs> and I remember. So when uh... we got there, we were praying. 
Oh my, yeah, I remember that. We were just, I remember, and, and on the way back, I remember right after, right after our last game, you got some random Canadian guy to drive you across the border with no guarantee <laughs> yeah. to get to Fargo, yeah. then to get back home. Oh, well, that's what it was. Fargo. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah. you're like, who is this guy driving, Micah? And he's, and you're like, I have no idea. They just got some random guy. I'm like, yeah. that's sketch. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, they, I got they some... were so nice. No, it was a couple, <laughs> and they drove me home. They just took me to Fargo's, and then I, dude, I drove you home to Fargo, Fargo for, for for like 25 hours. No, in the air. Where, did you stay in a hotel? In the air, I waited in the airport. My flight got delayed from six in the morning to like nine at night. Oh my gosh! Wow, I mean, yeah. But what did you do when you first got home? Sleep? Well, I have no idea. I have a bad memory. Remember? Oh yeah, my bad. But the great thing about that hotel, so we stayed. So when you when you go on trips, everyone stays in the same hotel, and they had yeah. a legendary indoor water slide. And me, Micah, and Joe fully took advantage of that. I mean, we were flying yeah. down, breaking, and they had no lifeguards, we so tried, you could do anything you We tried you every, yeah, yeah, we I tried remember, every way down. I, we went to the front desk and we asked we for bars of soap. Down. Yeah, we took garbage cans down. For, we just took garbage cans down the freaking slide. I went to the front desk asking for three bars of soap, and there at the top, I mean, because there's kids around, but we were by far the biggest idiots. We by far the biggest idiots there. We took our bodies. And we, we covered cleared it the with kids soap. out. Pretty yeah. <laughs> the parents are like, come here, don't don't get near those guys. Yeah, they're like, oh god, <laughs> stay away from these men. Um, but I remember. <laughs> Let's go. We covered our bodies with soap, and then we tried to see if that went faster. We tried everything. We went, we went tandem. Yeah. We went. I mean, we, the I, best. I think the best was me and you tandem, right? No, it was. I, the thing was, you that and was Joe. the fastest time because we because we we were timing our our takeoffs yeah. and our lands. Yeah, as you can see, we were heavily focused on our competition and uh really scouting out no we did our due diligence we're always but, striving to be the best yeah. <laughs> i think we'd be a good <laughs> match our team uh, just try and, f1, try and like ford f1 or a bobsled team yeah yeah um, bobsled team and just have the most ridiculous looking bobsled <laughs> Uh, we got we got some questions from on yeah uh, uh, yeah we're gonna we're gonna ask you one more question here before you let you off um they have a question in from somebody listening. Andre Medina here. Uh, for your senior season at UCLA, when it wasn't the smoothest of seasons and you had to play outside, set or you jump around, you guys had a bunch of injuries. What was that experience like and what did you learn from that experience? Oh, you know what's interesting is that experience wasn't – it wasn't too bad because we had had the same thing our sophomore year where we had returned our starting six or seven – and then we didn't play with our starting six or seven once the entire year, and everybody was out. So I was kind of used to it. Um, and I guess it was just about trying to just get better. I think that's what kept me going, was just trying to get better. Um, not really worried about what we couldn't control and just going in there and just, like, having pride in the fact that we were going to go in there and try and get better despite whatever was going on. Um having a little bit of a chip on our shoulder, uh, which I know is hard to, hard to have at UCLA because I know a lot of people think it's everything there. But, yeah, having a little bit of a chip on our shoulder and, like, just trying to go in there and get better, uh, that was definitely what kept me going. Uh, yeah, that's my best question. That's my best. Yeah, we got another brutal question from, uh, from Andre Medina. <laughs> She says the three of you guys were there to experience the domination of Long Beach the past three years with TJ, Josh, and the crew. How were those competitions against each other? What's your view of LBC? Yeah. Putting us on blast. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> no, dude, Long Beach was ridiculously good, man. Like, yeah, they were, yeah, they were very good. I mean, obviously, everybody. Yeah. No, they had. Like, the fact that Kyle just became one of the best players in the nation, like, yeah. Just made it so hard to deal with Josh and TJ because you couldn't really. Yeah, they were good. What can we say, man? We tried our <laughs> yeah. best. Yeah. <laughs> we tried our best. We went out there. You, you we tried and play. We can do. You try and play. We try and play them. You get out there and see if you can do what we can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you try and get what we your do. butt out there and see. <laughs> <laughs> You know, 
you know, Micah, we, uh, we'll let you go. We know you're driving back down here. We really appreciate it. Uh, comma, Micah Ma, he's on all music platforms. Spotify, Grammys. Apple Music, YouTube. Uh, hey, hey, keep Kama. me involved. Keep me involved in the huddle, boys. Keep me involved. In oh, the- of course. Yeah. We'll definitely have Micah back. As we improve. Keep me as a dear friend to- of the huddle. Absolutely. As we continue to build and uh, improve audio video quality, we're making the show uh, better and better. We're going to keep, uh, we're going to make sure Micah Ma comes on again. Um, we appreciate him coming on today and speaking. We know he's busy. Uh, everybody, we hope you stay safe. Micah and Zana have a safe trip back down. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you guys. All right, boys. Enjoy the quarantine. Thank you very much. You too. Social safe. distancing. Thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, don't worry about that. (laughs) Shoes, Micah. All right, boys, peace. Peace. There we are. Everybody back on here, uh, thank you for uh, listening into that. We really appreciate Micah coming on. We know he uh, he obviously is with his girlfriend, so we appreciate him taking time out of his day to come join us on the huddle here. Um, There's one more. We hope we're able... There's one more. Sorry, we'll take in there. here. We'll take in here one more. Uh, uh, first of all, Sean, much love for the shirt. I'm probably rocking. Uh, so I had a lot of suits and a lot of shirts for my games. Uh, those are canceled now. So on the huddle, I'll be sure to rock in the freshest of fresh. Uh, you know how I do. So I'll be rocking that much as possible. Much love for the shirt. But question. Um. From Bella Trigillis. I'm going to try and stop pronouncing the names because I'm so bad at it. Uh, any tips on staying motivated in the gym or on the court? Uh, what about this, Joe? Yeah, uh, I think we kind of went over this a little bit earlier. But for us, you know, the volleyball season, as you get older, you have less and less time for things outside of volleyball. And so this is really nice for us to be able to see family, be home for a little bit. Uh, take care of things outside of volleyball but we always know that there's going to be another season eventually uh, once we do get over this uh, pandemic going on Um, and I think if you truly do love volleyball you always do stay motivated I don't think it's something that has to be fabricated or made up and uh, for us it's going to be and for everybody else uh, who plays volleyball I think we uh, they're doing their best they can to stay in shape to be working out and then be touching the ball in their homes but um in terms of the motivation part I don't think it's that hard I don't think it's that difficult and I I I feel like most athletes uh would agree with that for the most part I don't know about you Gage yeah I mean yeah I mean there's nothing really add to that I think that uh the drive comes from within and if you're not playing to be the best or, or, or striving for a big goal, then it's hard to stay motivated. But if you have a goal in mind and you work at it, then everything comes along. Yes. We, uh, it, we are going to be taking in guest callers here um, the next few days. Um, and we will be reaching out here on uh, uh, over our Instagram social media page. Um, for those who don't follow or who weren't aware that we had started an Instagram page, um, it is up and running. Um, we hope you can check it out here and give us a follow, The Huddle 808. Um, we would love your guys' feedback on the show. We're going to be posting up clips. We're going to be posting up information regarding the show. Uh, and as well as hitting that subscribe button below this video here, um, the more subscribers, the more inclined we are to be bringing on uh, bigger and bigger guests. And we hope that we can continue to stay in touch with you guys uh, and um, keep you guys involved with uh, this page and this uh, this chat that we got going on. So again, thank you from us. Thank you again to Mike and for joining us today. Tomorrow we have uh, the starting setter uh, the University of Nebraska women's volleyball team, Nicklin Hames. She'll be calling in. She'll be our guest speaker tomorrow. Um, if you have questions and things you'd like for us to bring up, uh, we'll, there'll be a post later. Go ahead and comment on there what you'd like us to ask her. Uh, from Gage and I, from Max, who will be joining us again tomorrow. 
We thank you. Aloha, and everybody stay safe. Thank you, guys. Shoots. Social distancing.